A little raccoon with the guns and smart. He was smart as fuck. Did you see two? Yeah, no, I haven't two. seen two yet. Dude, I cried on the plane watching it. Oh, sweetie. <laughs> no, but like, I don't really cry much in life. <laughs> but every now and then, like, some big archetypal movie will just grab me. They can get you, especially <laughs> once you're a parent. You know, then yeah, yeah you watch much more vulnerable. What is that? A duck dick? We looking at a duck dick right there? Yeah, How is that yeah. even real? There's a nice little fact they had here on the uh, <laughs> forced copulation. Male here. ducks are notorious for attempting forced copulation with females, so females seem to have involved vaginas to make it hard for a male duck to actually inseminate them if they don't want to by forcing it towards the dead ends. Oh, wow, they have dead ends. They have, like, trap doors. <laughs> of course, male ducks haven't taken this lying down. The more forced copulation a duck engages in, the longer the male's penises tend to be, according to a 2010 study. Whoa. But so their dicks get longer the more they rape. I wonder if the female duck, like, laughs a little, like, when the rapey duck's like, meh, and she's like, meh, because oh. she, like, sent him the wrong way. Maybe. She's like, wah, wah. <laughs> she's like, you're not going to give me pregnant, but I just keep expelling <laughs> calories. Look at, this, look at this quote. In fact, male ducks grow a new penis every year. Whoa. Which means they can vary the length depending on that year's competition. Mm-hmm. Holy <laughs> shit. You imagine if your dick fell off every year like elk antlers? And every year it grew back. Like, for, like, months, nobody had sex, and everybody was cool with each other. And we're like, God, can't we just be like this all the time? Like, imagine if there was just, like, we had a season, right, like no animals dicks. have. Maybe that's our problem. We're such gluttons. We should have a breeding season. We should have a season where literally our dick falls off. It's such a good idea. And then it grows back. It grows back. Like, if you could re-engineer people <laughs> to have, like, a three-month period, like, a, to let's have off-season. Let's have a little off-season. Yeah. You know, where there's no genders. There's no male. There's no female. There's nothing. no nothing. Everybody's dick falls off, and everybody just chills out for a little bit and doesn't think about anything. But just life. Existential shit. <laughs> You know, think you know get, get some rental property. Yeah, think about like going to the beach more. Like, why don't I go to the beach more? I always enjoy it. It feels good when I'm there. And then the dick size and shape will tell you what the year is to come. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's a 15 incher. We got some serious war ahead of us. Mm, we got problems. Yeah, because like um, <laughs> chimp size, chimp ball size is directly proportionate to the amount of sluts that are near them. Whoa. That's the so- th- thing with primates for some reason. There was some correlation between promiscuous females and um like women having sex with more than one i mean in a derogatory term just like scientifically they were right. saying that women who are having sex with more more males those males grew bigger dicks and bigger balls sperm competition yeah like literally their balls got bigger i think that was like provable i don't know if the dick was provable people feel weird about studying dicks they do, you know, and there's so much like there's so many great stories if you study a dick. <laughs> but if like you're a dick doctor, people are like, hey, why that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've you been don't fall into that. Cocks for years. It's That's like, what I prefer to call them. It's the correct nomenclature. You know, everyone wants to say penis, but my daddy was a cock doctor. His daddy was a cock doctor. We've always been studying. It seems so important, yet everyone's so ashamed. <laughs> Have you read Sperm Wars? You know what? No, I did not. But I think that's been disproven. There was a study that they did where they could not recreate the idea that some sperm actually attack sperm and kill them. They couldn't they couldn't show that there was a real differentiation in cells like there were cells that have the ability to go out and kill other sperm. They were saying that that was more theoretical than anything. And the guy who originally wrote it might have like leaped to a conclusion. I can see that. Obviously, I don't know shit. But this is just what I had read was that, like, scientifically, it doesn't really jive. But what does jive is with with primates, this idea that the more females are around, the more uh, you grow more balls and you grow, like, bigger loads, I'm sure. That, it's assume. definitely about load size. Do you think they measure load size, though? How are they going to, like, hold on, chimp, <laughs> before you come. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> come over here, little fella. Why don't you pull out and, and, and come on this chimp over here? Yeah, how would you be able to tell? How would you be able to study... Chimp load size. They pr- probably just surround him with a bunch of slutty chimps, and then one g- brave dude just has to jerk him off. <sighs> you, no one's that brave. It's yeah, because no chimps will just rip your face off. Plus, they know that a hand job is not the best thing. They're like, <laughs> this is, we can do better than this. Like, this is, yeah. <laughs> especially with, with a big old scientist man hand. Yeah, they're like, start and, sucking or you're not going to get a sample. Yeah, and if it's a lady scientist, you can't let a lady scientist go in there to jerk off a chimp because that's like some sort of prostitution almost, right? So it'd have to be a dude. E- either way, the chimp's going to fuck you up if he wants to. He'll yeah. just beat the shit out of you while you're jerking him off. Yeah, that would just be such a weird beating. 
he, like, if how'd he you feels, get that black eye? I was jerking off a chimp, and he freaked out. Yeah, if he feels vulnerable at all. Like, you're going too hard. <laughs> Just <laughs> Like, I get vulnerable <laughs> with hand jobs. Yeah, could you imagine if you, like, hurt a chimp's dick? I mean, it's not like you guys are communicating in English or anything like right. that. Right. You're just jerking him off, and you look at him and like, "Hey, buddy, it's gonna be good. I'm gonna, you're gonna come so hard." And then, like, maybe you fucked up. You're like, maybe he likes it rough, and you give him a couple of hard shakes, yeah. and he just beats you to a pulp. Yeah, because you keep hitting his balls, and you don't realize it. Well, just grabbing his dick in a way that he's not comfortable with anymore. It's like I don't trust you anymore. <laughs> it's like before your movements were soft and sensual, and they seemed like controlled. Now you're like yanking on my dick. It's like now you got an agenda about this hand job. Yeah, and I think to a chimp, like any kind of violent display like that, that's like some sort of dominance display. Yeah. Like when a chimp takes a stick and starts banging it on another stick. Their balls get big and they just start punching. I don't know if that's how it happens. Do balls get big with violence? That's a good question. That's a real good question. I wonder if there's a correlation between violence and um, how much sexual intercourse they have. Because like... Um, the uh, bonobos have the most sex, yeah. but they have the least violence. Right. I wonder if that's just because that's just who they are. Because well, they're they're weird. They're they don't they don't like they don't do a lot of the shit that regular chimps do. No, and the females will just it's a, like it's a, it's a really funny nature channel when it's like, yeah, we have a male being angry, and then it's like, <laughs> and then like five chicks will be like, just start fucking them, and then it's like, now he's asleep in the banana leaves. <laughs> War has been averted for thousands of years. Yeah, they figured it out. Just have a, a big old fuck party every day. Just drain balls. And and pussies as well. We just keep everybody calm. Everybody fucks everybody. Everyone's fucking. Yeah, because then you think it might be your kid, too. So you have to, like, protect all the kids. They have rules. The only rule is a mother will not have sex with a son. That's a solid rule. It's the only one, though. <laughs> Guys fuck their daughters. It's weird. It's weird. The, the whole thing is... Um, it's they have a, a strange like system in that regard like this is the one taboo that this incredibly promiscuous culture like i guess you can call them a culture yeah species has they're fascinating man because they're so much like regular chimps but they're not violent at all hardly they like make some noise and shit but they don't do much yeah it almost like perfectly splits our psyches as humans dude whoa like, like we all have chimp and bonobo in us well just knowing that that's possible too yeah. Like that what what we are is just sort of like, you know, even like what we are as a culture, it's just sort of kind of like worked into this spot. And that's what it is. You know, like what, what we are, it didn't have to work out this way. You know, it could have worked out some other really weird way. Like totally. all, the other, all the other life forms <laughs> that you see around. I mean, we could be dolphins. They think dolphins are as smart as us. They think it's entirely possible that... Without the context of our culture, like our ability to display intelligence through tests and math and building things, engineering, without any ability to display that, we don't really know how smart they actually are. We just assume that the social intelligence they have is not as valuable right. as the, the intelligence that's involved in creating things. But they have a cerebral cortex that's 40% larger than a person's. That's intense. Yeah, it's intense. Yeah, because all our yeah all our tests are based on what we value. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, what we appreciate. I mean, I'm sure there's some other tests that they do, and they know there's some really complex language that they have that they don't they can't decipher. They they still haven't figured out what the fuck they're saying. <laughs> they know that there's dialects. They know there's dialects, and they know that dolphins can understand a lot of the things that we tell them. But uh, they, they don't exactly know what the fuck they're saying, that's for sure. They've never broken it down like to, remember in uh, Close Encounters? Yeah. Do, 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 do. They broke it down. They're like, oh, there's a whole language here. I'll see. You know, and they, they tried to figure out what the language was. They're, they've been studying dolphin language forever, and they're like, who knows what the fuck they're saying. Dude, dolphins blow my mind. Dude, they're smart. But they also do some fucked up shit, too. They do. Yeah. A lot of infanticide. Sex slaves. Yeah, they kill babies. <clears throat> it's a real common thing like it is in all of nature, unfortunately. Yeah. Males kill the, the babies of, uh, you know, if it's not his kids. Yeah. You find a woman, you kill her babies. It's really crazy that that's, uh, that's the code of nature. Somehow or another, like, that was the way to do it. Like, whew. Like, somehow or another, of all the years of these things trying to improve to get to the position they're at now and to be the most sturdy, the most viable, the most complex, the most, the most able to figure out a way to survive, after all that, one of the options for one of the smartest things on the planet is eat babies. you got to eat the babies 
of other dudes. Yeah, it's like a race to the bottom of morality for efficiency on that one. Because it's like it's you can see how quickly that works. You know, your genes go, theirs don't. But it's like mm. so disturbing. Here's the thing. Do you think that there's a massive, I mean, there's got to be a massive, massive advantage in being able to physically record things that people have learned and to be able to recreate them in the way that only we can. Like as much as we can say that dolphins are intelligent, and I'm sure they are, and they might, their brains might work better than ours. Who the fuck knows? But our brains, we have this weird ability to manipulate things on dry land. And that means we figured out electricity. And that means we figured out electronics. That fi we figured out electronic storage and shit like this. The internet, Twitter, I Instagram, yeah. the instantaneous access to information about stuff. Like, that's just changing everything. Yeah, Almost we, like a life form. It, it's unreal because we can act out things in the abstract and not actually have to do them and then create something bigger. Yeah, but I'm not sure we're smarter. I think collectively we are. But, like, as individuals, like, a dolphin literally might be, like, a more potent mind than ours. Yeah. Well, pigeons are, have incredible abilities that we don't have. Really? Yeah. They, they can go, like, five, 6,000 miles to the same spot without a map or oh, iPhone. Oh, right. Like, those homing pigeons. Yeah. The, what are they using? Like, magnetic fields? What are they using? Like, the I north? don't even know. Oof. I mean, that, to me, is I, so intense. You know, Nikola Tesla was in love with a pigeon. Oh, yeah, I heard that on this show, actually. You yeah. were talking about that. Yeah. That's hilarious. That guy was deep, deep. Yeah, he couldn't make money on any of his...